There are certain allergies that can be passed on from one generation to the next, but even those diseases, if you change your behaviors, that can also improve and decrease the likelihood of having food allergies. I want to kind of go back and understand more these environmental factors that are predisposing children and adults to these factors. So you mentioned one which was dry skin. Are there any other factors that, that we've identified that seem to be predisposing people? Yeah, and there's some factors if they're lacking, they also predispose people. So people have talked about having good microbiome, good dirt, and that helps sort of decrease the likelihood of food allergies. Children who grow up on farms, for example, have uh, a really good exposure to animals. They tend not to have as many food allergies, interestingly enough, so I call that the dirt hypothesis. Also. Growing up with a lot of animals like dogs also helps uh, reduce the likelihood and that's probably due to the microbiome. Importantly is vitamin D seems to also play a role. So having enough vitamin D in your blood also decreases the risk of food allergies. Being around too much detergent, that's what I call the dry skin hypothesis. Unfortunately, a lot of our clothing being washed in detergents, our dishwashers having really potent concentrated detergents these days, it's not getting rinsed away enough so that the skin in babies, it heals so well, but it is somewhat more sensitive than let's say adult skin. And so because of that, they tend to have dry skin due to all these other issues and let alone detergents, but also any time in life, whether or not you're a child or a baby or, or an adult, if you have pollution or tobacco smoke, that also causes dry skin and itchiness, and not just the skin on the surface, but also in your body. So it's not that anything that touches the air has skin cells. So that means our lungs, that means our gut. So all of these features that I talked about can affect the skin. And through, we think that through the skin allergies can begin. Um, it's not the only hypothesis. We also think that it's really important to make sure that when you look at your overall diet, that you diversify that diet really early and often so that if you can take certain proteins and feed that to your children when they're young and have that diversity in the diet, that that can actually prevent the advent of food allergies later on in life. So we talked about dirt, we talked about dogs, we talked about detergents, we talked about vitamin D, and we talked about diversity in diet. So I call that kind of the Ds. But importantly, that dry skin does seem to be a conduit by which food allergies start. But what I didn't say was DNA. And that's important because a lot of parents, a lot of people will say, oh, my parents gave this to me or I'm gen I, this is in my genes, so there's no way I can do anything about that. And that's not true. There are certain allergies that can be passed on from one generation to the next, but even those diseases, if you change your behaviors, that can also improve and decrease the likelihood of having food allergies. So, so I hope that was helpful. When people do listen, I hope when they do try to improve their skin barrier, if there is an emollient you can buy, try to stay away from the emollients that are based with petroleum products or paraffin products or Vaseline, because what science has now shown us is that because those are not natural to the skin, our skin doesn't really like wax or petroleum products or Vas Vaseline is a petroleum product, that tends to increase the bacteria on our skin and that can make overall the skin inflammation worse. So try to choose products that have natural lipids that give the skin back what they're missing. How does one look for that on the label? What, what would be the signs of that? The natural lipids are like ceramide. So I don't work for any companies. I don't really know which companies have ceramide, but I know one company, Cereva, has, cer has ceramide in it. So try to look for those um, emollients that actually replete the skin with what it is depleted from, which are its natural lipids. And then also try to rinse things. Now we are in a water shortage and we have to be careful too uh, with not using too much water. But if you can choose ecologically friendly detergents because eco-friendly detergents, eco-friendly foods tend to be better for our own bodies. And I'd love to know your own opinion about that, Peter, but that's what I typically tell my patients. Try to avoid detergents that are not eco-friendly because they're probably not so friendly to your body. Mm -hmm.